So to get started, um, porting the EDK to different platforms is a real headache sometimes, right? So um, our next speaker is about to make our lives way, way easier. So please give a warm welcome to Evan Lloyd. Hi. Thank you. Um, OK, so just some background. Uh, we started a Windows on ARM team in ARM about seven years ago. And it's kept us busy ever since. Most of that work you can guess at in that my job title is now tech lead for UEFI, not Windows on ARM. We, we put a lot of effort into the firmware. And um, I think we should reduce that. Um, so I'm going to go through this introduction, tell you something about the framework we have already produced, the plans, and uh, some links in discussion. So background. If we take just a single ARM platform, we found we were producing a lot of versions of firmware. We have this big little setup. But for various reasons, we wanted to have firmware builds that only use the big, only use the little. It meant we had a lot of variants on the ACPI tables that are minor changes, but they're minor changes you have to maintain and test. And it, it can be uh, difficult to get it right. So we found it was expensive. On top of that, for a lot of other platforms, many more. Um, hardware variants appear. So the cost can be quite significant, particularly in terms of managing the binaries. So what we wanted to do was make the firmware more configurable, um, not have different builds for slightly different platforms, uh, eliminate the, the bugs you get when you copy paste and forget to edit a number, um, and just to be able to validate that it, it works. So. so for simplicity, we wanted to be able to say which ACPI tables we cared about, provide the hardware information that was necessary for those tables and nothing else, um, generate the tables, and as an option, allow the normal built tables to be used if, if you wanted to do that. In particular, particular, what we found is we could generate a table through the framework and then feed the binary back in as a raw binary, which was an optimization. So the framework itself um, is split into to the table manager, which is uh, the, the static part of the code, and the configuration manager, which holds the platform information. And this is very design specific. Uh, I should explain this talk was aimed at the UFI plug fest, but we'd like more people to know about it, so we're here. Um, the idea is that we, we know how to build an MADT. We just don't always know some of the information that goes into that table. And so if, if we have the common code, the common generation in, in standard firmware, we can just pull in the information and, and plug it into the table. So. Configuration Manager right now is a prototype. It's very platform specific. Our intent is to parse a text file or a, a um, similar binary spec generated by the SOC design software. So instead of looking at a spec and hand editing code, we should be able to just pass it through some scripts and generate the uh, configuration information for the platform, which lets us not worry about uh, debugging, because it should be right from the start. Um, and because we provide a configurable list of tables, we can fit the, the um, firmware to whatever platform requirements there are. Um, the obvious example being for Windows, you need uh, rather more tables than you do for other things. Um, so the table manager does all, all the um, generation. I've, I've really, I've just covered that. Um, 
the, the detail is, is more down to the code design. Uh, this is a prototype and proof of concept. It works. We can make uh, operating systems boot from generated tables. Um, so the table factory is, is the, um, the framework that, that takes the, the spec and generates the appropriate tables. Um, missing from here, in theory, we could generate a device tree. Um, I'll talk a little about that later on. So the, the table generator for each table coded in, in the factory, we know what information we need from the configuration manager. It's therefore, simple to go and perhaps get, um, uh, as, a, as a trivial example, for a DBG2 table, all you need to know is the actual address of the, um, the console, the uh, UART. And um, you, you can go and ask the system generator where it put the UART and feed that straight into your table. So, um, for flexibility, we have the, what we call the generic inf implementation, which knows about the table, but we also allow a raw, we've got one of those, you can have it, option. So you can just feed existing tables in, or as an optimization, you can feed back the generated table that you've dumped into the, the, um, the factory as a, use this one, it's quicker to boot. Um, so the, the sequence um, is fairly simple. We start off by asking the config manager what tables it wants to build. And then for each table, we ask for a generator and get the hardware information. Um, Having generated the table, we pass it to the uh, EDK2 framework to give to the operating system. So um, that went very quickly. So for, for the current status and plans, in um, EDK2 platforms, we have examples for Juno and the um, FVP models. Um, it's based on ACPI 6.2. There's a list of the tables currently catered for. We need to update that with uh, one or two new tables that are coming out. But, but it will successfully boot uh, Linux and Windows. So um, to do that, this is slightly out of date. We, we proposed a change to the ACPI CA tools, and that is now released. So that. Um, minus TC option will uh, build the tables we need. So future plans, add more tables. We would like to add SM BIOS support because it would just be tidier than, than hand rolling tables. And what we really want to do, still outstanding, is to pass the information generated by A2 um, depends on, on the partner, which tools they use for SOC layout. But um, in, in current terms, we're looking to use the IP exact output to generate tables. Um, those of you who are at the trusted firmware talk yesterday will have heard that there's a move to use device tree as the system description for trusted firmware. And one interesting option we have is to parse a device tree-like structure. And I'm, I'm emphasizing like because in certain areas, like server, device tree is, is not a welcome term. But we believe we can take a device tree-like description and generate the ACPI tables from that. And that's our, our next step from here. Um, so this hardware information parser, right now, we don't know exactly what. Um, have moved on to an IP exact view of the world only because that's the tool we, we have internally. So but we're very open to other system descriptions. 
the, the, the real point being that you eliminate a whole range of human error possibilities from your firmware generation. So, and right now we have a, a, a set of branches on EDK2 staging and, and uh, EDK2 platforms with example code. We are very keen and are getting some partner uh, pressure to move that into EDK2 itself and would, would like support for that from anybody who can see the value of, of what we're doing. So, um, Oh, gets us. So, uh, as an aside, we submitted an ACPI view tool to EDK2. It sort of duplicates the ACPI CA functionality, but it sits within EDK2 shell and lets you dump your platform at that point where the, um, the operating system may not be happy with your ACPI tables. And so it's quite helpful when you're debugging a new system. Um, the important point is that it will also generate the dump that can be fed back into the, the shell as a raw table. So, right. So, questions? Uh, got some obvious questions there. Um, there is a small cost in memory footprint. We're being more generic. The, the main cost is at runtime services, not boot services. So. Uh, it's not really relevant. Um, likewise, image size may, may be slightly bigger. On the other hand, you have fewer images to manage, is, is our hope. So, um, so in the light of um, the earlier presentation, boot time might be a concern. And um, we. we have allowed for optimizing with a cached view of the tables. So there may still be a, a, a small cost, but I estimate it's very small. So, right. Any uh, other questions? No, I think we. Okay, we've lost our microphone. Is there? Right, please. Thank you. I'm sorry, I was taking care of the leaf blower outside. So, yes. <laughs> so we have questions. Well, that was yeah, so sorry, that was much quicker than I estimated. Yeah, well, that was much quicker, like 10 minutes. We have a half an hour of questions. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, well, let's do this. Let's fill this half an hour. <laughs> Hi, thank you. A um, uh, couple of things. One is the we, we've on power, we, we don't use ACPI, we don't do UFI, uh, but we've gone through a sort of a similar exercise for generating various firmware configuration stuff from machine descriptions. It's not dynamic, it's static, but sort of similar in spirit. Uh, experience is the real devil is in the original hardware description and its format. Yes. That is really where all the horror comes from. And so, um, I, I, not really a question in a way, but I think there's a lot of emphasis to be done in getting that one thing right, because it will really define a long run how usable and, uh, and generic that thing is going to be. Yeah. Um, uh, so well, that, that's sort of more of a comment. Um, secondly, I'm interested in what you mean by the problem or, or, or misperception of device tree in the server world. I mean. I suppose you mean the x86 server world? Uh, um, or, or do you mean... Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not sure how politically acceptable it is to, to, to go into detail, but I know uh, within ARM, the, the, the server side of the world uh, will hawk and spit when you mention device tree. That yeah, is, well, we can thank John Masters for that. We all know that. But uh, yeah. despite all of his uh, interesting work, John hasn't completely mm. killed it. The, the, I would like to point out that there have been some efforts in the past, and I would very, very much like to, to, to see that revived if I, if I can help, to, on the contrary, get those two a bit more 
a bit closer again. So one of the things that was done a few years back was to add to ACPI some uh, get property mechanism for arbitrary properties to match the ability of the device tree to provide arbitrary properties and provide um, uh, consistent interfaces to device drivers. Uh, this is an example of a step where if we cool the work toward a direction where we can effectively almost have a bijection between ACPI table and device tree and go back and forth between them, yeah. uh, the, the world will be a better place. Um, so I think they don't have to be, uh, to, to be uh, opposed. And uh, it would make a lot of sense when you say device tree like to actually do a device tree and not device tree like. And I can't hear it specifically because it will help everybody go and step toward that the direction where we, we remove the arbitrary differences as much as possible, turn them purely into a syntactic representational difference rather than a fundamental uh, conceptual difference in what gets represented. Um, and, and that will be, make everything easier for everybody, basically. I would not argue with your case. I will only point out that from where I stand, it's politically easier to get an update into EDK2 that's not been opposed because it's based on device tree. It okay. would so be difficult in some circles. Maybe I should then try to upstream my power port of yeah. EDK2, which is entirely device tree based. Yeah. That would be yeah. interesting. Um, yeah. Indeed, it's not something we've addressed. Mm -mm. Um, I, I, I think I don't need to go into reasons why. No, no, no. I, I just. <laughs> I think yeah. it was probably worth mentioning, and uh, uh, be because it's just a waste of time in, 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 you know, at the end of the day. Okay, more questions? Over there. Have a good run. Thank you. Uh, so first of all, to respond to Ben, uh, uh, I think the HPI versus DT debate in the ARM world is yeah. only about what the firmware exposes to the OS. Yes. What we do internally, uh, that's, that's an implementation detail, and if we can use DTs to describe the platform from one firmware phase to the other phase, I think that's perfectly fine, and I don't think there are any political issues with that at all. Um, about the table generation, I was wondering, so you mentioned the DSDT SSD tables as raw tables. Does it mean that they're not generated um, currently? Sorry, uh, we've used raw basically as um, you've, you've written some ASL and generated a, an AML binary. You can then give that to the framework and say, use this table. Okay. So we're not. Can you generate DSDT as well? From a, can you generate the DSDT from a more abstract? We, we have some techniques we've played with, and um, you, you have trouble doing the whole thing, but by splitting um, individual components out into SSDTs, you can, can generate customizable components that are fairly easy to, um, to plug back in. In particular, the ACPI CA tools are now giving us the option of labeling offsets, and that allows us to to customize small tables rather, rather than generating um, 10 descriptions of a very similar processes, you use one and just change the numbers. So that, that's um, viable. Yeah, and, and then um, the, for instance, the IORT and PPTT yeah. tables are fairly, well, they're fairly dense in the sense yes. that they uh, yeah. contain a lot of non-trivial uh, information. Yes. Uh, is, can you really have, do you really have the coverage to, to uh, generate non-trivial uh, IO topologies or non-trivial cache and CPU topologies uh, using this uh, framework? Um, certainly, we, using exactly the technique I've just mentioned of, of using lots of small SSDTs, you can describe the, the, the cache and processor topologies fairly clearly. Um, it's, it's as long as the base information is there. We, we, obviously, Juno is a fairly trivial case, but there's no reason it couldn't be extended to a, a server type system. And so.
Any more questions? Yeah, okay, over there. Sorry, this is a terrible question. Um, are you trying to subset the data to avoid having unused information in the tables? Is, is that basically it? Because I just wonder, does it really matter if you have extra stuff in the tables? Uh, how, much, how inefficient is it? And can you have some sort of you know, runtime configuration to say what, what you're going to need? Uh, and then reduce your, you know, the multiplicative effect you mentioned that way. Um, sorry, I, I'll make a, a stab at what I think you mean. You can tell me if I'm wrong. A technique I've, I've seen used on some platforms is to, to pre-generate a number of uh, ACPI tables and use uh, the book menu to select, effectively to select which one you want to use. Um, we're, we're, we have a problem with the amount of work it takes to generate and manage the various views of, of different, or, or different views of the same table. And so we're trying to not have that mechanical process of selecting between various tables. Instead, driving the table generation from the, the boot option or whatever. Does that answer your question? Put it another way, if you put all the data in there. I beg your pardon? If you put all the data in there, yeah. and just every platform had all of it, yeah. would, would that work? Um, depending on what the data was, uh, as a for instance, if, if we tell the operating system it's got a, a, a UART that isn't there, um, we're not always sure that the operating system won't crash. So. so um, I, I know that's a, an unlikely case, but take it more to a wider range. It's possible to tell the operating system it's got things that it would be unhappy to find missing. So, right. So, okay. Thank you. Any more questions? <laughs> <laughs>